and then, but his body remained intact and unharmed. This state, this state, when we, you reach this state, it is called the pure light surging through one's physical body, even surging through your physical body as well, not just uh, in front of you, but it does surge through, surge, not, not surge, uh, searching, you know, running through and strongly. So they call it searching through, the light searching through your physical body. That's why worm or whatever, <laughs> insect, whatever, bacteria cannot bear. They just be destroyed, gone, hmm? maybe incinerated <laughs> by that light. Yeah, when you just see the, the light in front of you, maybe it's different. But when that, in that second state, the light already infused your whole body, yeah, running through the whole body, then nothing can withstand it. Only the good things remain. Only the elation. That's why you feel good. Yeah? When you see the light like that, when you meditate, you see the light. Oh, you feel so blissful and light. Yeah? As if you don't have anybody anymore. Yes. Because all the bad elements has been cleansed out. And you feel pure again, like a child. Yeah? So you feel so good. Yeah? Even if you still can be able to walk, you feel like you're walking on clouds. <laughs> you have nothing. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, you know that, huh? Some of you know that. Yeah, it's cool like that. <clears throat> it is a temporary state in the course of intense practice. Even then, mark it. It's just a temporary state of enlightenment. It's not like not enlightenment. It is enlightenment. It's just not yet. It's just a beginner's. And you already clean yourself of all the attached karmic retribution from your body in the form of worm, insect, bacteria, whatever that attached to your body. And does not indicate sagehood. Yeah. If he does not think he has become a sage, then this will be a good state for him. Of course, you progress. Yeah, good. If you don't think you are a saint. Insane, maybe. <laughs> yeah, because you will feel too happy, you know, if people see you dancing happy, smiling all the time, all by yourself and singing Buddha's pray, God's pray, people will think, oh, this guy, cuckoo, cuckoo. <laughs> he talked to himself, he's happy, dancing all alone with no reason. Yeah? <laughs> maybe hugging other people and all that. Try not to, okay? <laughs> this world they are not used to with this kind of <laughs> ecstatic uh, state of mind and like uh, unconditional, you know, love. It's just too carefree. You might even take off your clothes dancing alone. You know? <laughs> ah, possible. No, possible. There's nothing to laugh at. Because <laughs> you couldn't care less, you know? You just don't feel like you're taking off clothes or anything. It's just natural, okay? That you don't feel like being uh, confined to anything anymore, yeah? Uh, it's just simple, you know, just like that. You're like a kid. If you don't want to wear clothes, you just take it off, you think nothing. Only when we grow up that we become a little bit truly <laughs> uh, judgmental, yeah? And then wear this clothes, that's clothes, and uh, if you don't, then woe to you. The police will try to wear something on you. <laughs> if you don't wear clothes, the police will wear something for you, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's the problem with our world. But when a kid don't wear nothing, when a little kid don't wear, nobody, no police will come and put chain on him or her, right? Just when we grow up, what's the difference? When you are a kid, as a boy, maybe just smaller in everything size, but it's still, you don't wear clothes. So why is it when you grow bigger, and you wear no clothes, and then you have problem? Huh? <laughs> San Francis, when he was still a monk, huh? he's, he's a monk, sometimes he see people have no clothes outside, he just take off everything, give it to him, and then walk home like that. And all the monks go him, this is indecent, this is very bad, bad boy, why you do this? Uh, he said, I, I didn't know it's a bad thing to do. <laughs> it's just somebody has no clothes. Some poor people cold and have no clothes, so I, I give it to him. 
We monks supposed to give no, <laughs> so innocently, <laughs> innocently. Yeah, because he was in such a state of mind that he don't think too much. That's why sometimes he lifts himself up. Uh, his body went up to the top of the church. Yeah, it's not because he wanted. Just sometimes he in that state of mind. Okay. Mm. Also, maybe he has attained some of this power that he can levitate without even wanting. I told you in some other time, Sunday, I could do all that. Just I had to exchange it to be here. I exchange everything. <laughs> Sit in front of you, it's just a normal human, very helpless. Yeah, maybe I have some wisdom. <laughs> Power, everything you see is only from inside. Cannot show it to the world, what I have. Jesus, I guess, if he did not cure the dead, eh? if he did not bring the dead back to life and cure the blind and heal the sick, all that, so obviously, probably he would have lived longer. These kind of things are the heavier interference with karma, mm -hmm. okay? Physically, in the external world, you don't use this. Of course, the magician and all that, they do this, but they are different, okay? They will come back again, so nobody cares. The Maya don't run after them. But if a master who came down here already signed contract to relinquish everything and don't show his power in this world and do that, then he will have to pay. You have to pay. If you save one life, you have to pay with your life. It's like anyone else. Yeah, it's a very sad thing, but you know, but everybody liked it that way at that time. Even his mother forced him to do the magic trick again, make water into wine. And Jesus did not want it. He even said, why, mother, why did you force me to do this? Mother wanted <laughs> to show off. And maybe some people expect him to, to cure their sickness, yeah? Or some disciples just hurrah on so because of my master, you know, he can do all this. I show you. Bring the sick here. He'll do it. <laughs> they just too enthusiastic, yeah? Just like beginner, you know? You just want to tell the whole world, your master is so great, can do this, can do that. But that's an inside thing. But if you lay hand on somebody and wake him up from the dead, that is a different thing. Hmm? But if he consider himself a sage, then he will be vulnerable to the demon's influence. Okay, that's the second state. Still be influenced by demons. Only if your ego trick you, <laughs> your ego will tell you that, okay, you are already a Buddha and stuff like that, then you'll be in trouble. Hmm? Just watch yourself. <laughs> Don't watch anybody else. <laughs> Don't even worry about somebody come kill you or anything. Watch your ego. That's the worst enemy we could have. If people kill you, maybe you, you, you die, okay, fine. Then you come back again. You still have this enlightening power. And then you will connect with another master somehow. Yeah? Because your stage already high. The master is easy to find. You will understand that you must find the master. And when you find one, you understand right away. <laughs> Even you have not reached the highest stage in last life, but you're already on the way. So if you meet another guy and you ask to go into Meoli, he tell you, you know it. Oh yeah, that's a place I want to go. Okay, and then you follow him. But if your ego mislead you, make you think that you are a sage, a saint, higher level saint, then, then the demons can come and make use of that and harm you. And spiritually loss is worse than losing a thousand lives bodily. Very difficult to find that again. Very difficult to find a master already. <laughs> if you lose your spiritual power, it's even worse. Huh? Then you cannot find another master. Because you will be so blurred now. Huh? You will not understand that you have to find a master or anything anymore. You just completely mix into the six paths of existence. You never think of anything about spiritual or finding a master even. Yeah. You completely forget your purpose to, to be born as human. Yeah. It's the same in, uh, in hell. I told you I don't want you to go to hell. You will not remember. You don't know your master's name. You don't know anyone. 
that you can call upon to help. At that time, because you doom already. Okay, finished. Now, this is the third stage. Okay, the Buddha described further. Further, as the person uses his mind to intently investigate inside and outside his physical and spiritual souls, intellect, will, essence, and spirit will be able to interact with one another without affecting his body. Wow, this is another wondrous state. They will take turns as hosts and guests. Then he may suddenly hear the Dhamma being spoken in space. Some of Buddha's disciples at that time heard those things. Maybe some of you also hear it, you know? Or you may say you just hear some preaching of the truth somewhere, you know? It's not like from the microphone, from your record player, video, nothing. You sit in an empty forest and then you hear the Dharma preaching. Maybe from Buddha, maybe from Master, maybe from other Master, maybe from Jesus, etc., etc. Huh? This is a wonderful stage also. Or perhaps he will hear esoteric truths being pronounced simultaneously throughout the ten directions. This state is called the essence and souls alternately separating and uniting and the planting of good seeds. That is the third state. <laughs> it's a long state. <laughs> It is a temporary state and does not indicate sagehood. Sagehood not necessarily mean Buddhahood, okay? Maybe Bodhisattva, a stage lower, but still a saintly, a sage, yeah? Okay. So if he does not think he has become a sage, then this will be a good state, yeah? One step up the ladder. But if he considers himself a sage, then he will be vulnerable to the demon's influence, as usual, above. Okay, next state. I'm trying to keep my calendar intact, okay? I, I read only today, I behave. <laughs> Further, when the person's mind becomes... I mean, really, you want me just to read out? Just to read? Huh? No? Comment? Yeah, your calendar is my favorite part. <laughs> calendar. <Okay. laughs> Thank you. Thank you, my love. <laughs> okay. <laughs> just a blah on, huh? <laughs> Actually, I'm telling you, just entertaining you. I don't know how much you understand and how much you believe and how much you will practice. I saw evidence everywhere. Yeah? Many small things I teach, uh, you guys don't keep. I don't mean the precepts, something about the environment, for example, yeah? So if you listen and understand, then I'm very happy for you. If you don't, well, business as usual, okay? I don't expect much from you in this time of Dharma and in age. And the Buddha is far away already, okay? This is a small thing, for example, I say you don't use toilet paper, okay? You use the water and soap light detergent, uh, organic and non-toxin detergent to wash yourself. I don't see that in some of the disciples' house. And they built me a little room somewhere in where I used to be before. My first place is in the mountain. We didn't have a lot of money, just buy a piece of land and then put up tent to stay. And that was a long time ago. And then uh, they build a little place there for me, but the, the bathroom, the toilet, don't have this extra spray. With that spray, you can clean the residue inside under the toilet seat. It's make your house cleaner. Don't have. <laughs> Lucky I, I knew. <laughs> I know my disciples. <laughs> I have my own. You know, you can bring a bottle or something like that, but it's not the same. It's not as convenient and as good cleaning like a spray attached to your toilet. You understand? A small spray, long like this, and a small head. Not like a shower head, but smaller, like very little. You spray around it. Also clean yourself. Perfect. Mm -hmm. Good for environment. Save a lot of trees. Because sometimes they don't just use a Dead tree, they don't have enough time to wait for the tree to die to use it. They just use any trees. Hmm? 
imagine we are billions of people. Everybody use a little bit of paper every day. Imagine how many trees have died, flushed down the toilet. How much work has gone to that job? How much pollution for the planet? Because these paper they use bleach to make it white, so it look it more clean. Yeah, but the bleach you go where? You know, right? Go into your river. Yeah, and the sea. And slowly, slowly, river are too polluted to use the sea a dead, mm? dead sea. Etc. Etc. Not just about money, not just about listening to master teaching. It's about you, and your world, and the world of your children. This is a very small thing, even very convenient. Just call the plumber; he attach it in no time. You could even do it yourself. I could do it myself also. I don't mean all of you, okay? When I say you in general, okay? I know some of you did it. I know. I know. I asked one of the doctor in Taiwan. He said, "Oh, we we listen to what you said, Master. We don't use toilet paper anymore. But in my own home, my helpers want to use them. So I took all the toilet paper rolls away. I stuck it all in mine, and I say, 'You don't have any more. <laughs> and now you use what I told you to use, and keep that there in case for anything. You can." Or if you already bought it, you can use it for something. Wipe the floor, as a spill or something. I use it until it's done, or blow your nose, or whatever. But later, don't buy no more. Yeah. And in my house right now, my so-called house, they still use this um, kitchen paper towel. That is the worst case also. They're bleaching, oh no end, and it's very dirty. If you use it to wipe your utensil. Your cooking utensil or your bowls, that is very bad for you, very bad. Only use it really when there's really urgent, nothing else. You can, you no choice, okay? Otherwise, don't use it. <laughs> I'd rather, you know, clean it on my body, really. Uh, these kitchen rolls, white, like snow, look clean, but no, very dirty. So many chemicals go in there, and it's very bad for environment. Then I know. You see, not everybody listen to me. Even though it's good for them, good for environment. When you protect the environment, you have merit as well. Not just protect your pocket. You protect the trees. You protect the earth. They are all grateful to you. They bless you. And you don't have the karma of killing, killing tree. Killing the environment, killing many bacteria that go in the process of making this bleaching white paper, huh? I teach you what I do from my own experience, and I know what's good for you. I don't just tell you to do it, and I do differently. It's not true. It's not like that. I do exactly <laughs> what I tell you. But then, if you don't listen, then what can I do, huh? I'm too busy. I can't just go in around chasing who who did this, who put this paper. You know, change it quickly. It's too much sometimes, yeah. And I don't use that even. I don't use that. <laughs> If I don't have any towel, I use my clean clothes <laughs> to wipe whatever I need to. Hmm? Yeah. And I use my dirty clothes to wipe my bathroom floor after the shower or something. It's wet. I don't. I don't use that kind of paper. I don't use clean towel, so I don't have to wash double. Because about my bathroom clean anyway, just water, you know, or maybe a little soapy. So I, the the clothes that I change, I use it <laughs> to wipe. I do everything with the consideration for the next generation as well. Okay, not just I'm comfortable and I don't see anything else. It's not like that. Also with the love for the environment. 